I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, they shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sakes, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Father, we love you and we praise you. God, we thank you for this is the day that you have established. This is the day that you have made. This is the day that you have fashioned, Lord God, and we thank you that when you thought of this day, even before the foundations of the world, you had all of us in mind, Lord God. And so we're grateful on this morning, that this afternoon, that we made the wake-up list, Lord God. And so we just say thank you even now, Lord God. We thank you for another Sunday, Lord God. We thank you that you have allowed us to cross over the threshold into another month, Lord God. And for this, we say thank you, Lord God. God, when we look back over this year, Lord God, January, you've been good. February, you've been good. March, you've been good. And all of April, you've been good, Lord God. And even these few days in May, Lord God, you have been consistent and you have been good. And so we just say thank you on today, Lord God. Before we ask you for anything, Lord God, we thank you for everything that you've done, Lord God. We thank you for keeping us protected, Lord God. We thank you for watching over us, Lord God. We thank you that your hand is still upon us, Lord God. We thank you that no hurt, harm, or danger came upon us, Lord God. We thank you that no sickness or disease overwhelmed our bodies, Lord God. And for this, we say thank you. And so now, God, as we gather together in your sanctuary, Lord God, as we gather together all around the world through social media, Lord God, as we gather together, Lord God, we pray that we would feel your manifested presence in this place, God. God, your presence, uh, your presence that will heal sick bodies, Lord God. Your presence that will feed broken hearts, hearts, Lord God. Your presence that will lift bowed heads, Lord God. Your presence that will save lost souls, Lord God. Your presence that will deliver the depressed, Lord God. Your presence, Lord God, that will move mountains, Lord God. Your presence, Lord God, that will allow us to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Lord God. And for this, we say thank you, Lord God. So we don't want to move without you on today. So we summons your presence in this place, God. We summons your presence in this sanctuary. We summons your presence in our very homes, Lord God. We summons your presence in our cars, Lord God. Wherever we may be, Lord God, we want to feel your glory. We want to feel your Shekinah glory. Hallelujah. And so, God, we pray that you will be a cloud over us. Even now, God, in the name of Jesus, have thine own way. Have thine own way. Hallelujah. Have thine own way. Hallelujah. Move how you want to move. Do what you want to do. God, we get out of the way even now. We surrender and we yield ourselves to you even now, God, in the name of Jesus. Have thine own way. Mold us and make us and shape us and move us and break us and mend us and replenish us and revive us and make us over, God, whatever it is that you want to do, God. In the name of Jesus, move by your spirit, God. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh in this place. Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh in every home, God. In the name of Jesus. And so we say thank you now, God. We say thank you, Jehovah. We say thank you, Yahweh. We say thank you, El Shaddai. We say thank you, Elohim. We say thank you, Jehovah Nisi. We say 
Jesus. We decree and we declare that this will be a great day. In the name of Jesus, we decree and we declare that this will be the best day of our life. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke all obstacles. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke sickness. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke anything.
there's a protocol. That's the only reason why I'm inserted in this portion of the service because when you just experienced, God was in the building, so you should already feel welcome. But just because of protocol, let me welcome you to the Olivet Open Church.
chapter 5. Oh, I love him today. I love him today. I love him. I love him. I love him. Ephesians chapter 5. I want to continue this message today from Ephesians chapter 5. I want to pick up where I left off today. And I trust you're being blessed by this broadcast. You can write us. Um, you can email us. Olive at Oakland, gmail.com. Um, you can visit us on the web, www.olivetoakland.org. Oakland.org, www.olivetoakland.org. You can vis visit us on the web. I want to get into this message today. Thank God for the Levites here with me today. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 14 reads, Wherefore, he said, Awake thou that sleepest, sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Verse 16 says, Redeeming the time, because the days are evil been talking for the last few weeks about don't, you don't have time to waste. You don't have time to waste. What are you doing with God's time? What are you doing with God's time? Just reviewing very quickly, we understand um, that the church at Ephesus um, was one of the largest city in Rome and we understand um, that there was a goddess by by the name of Artemis, and she was um, the god of sex, and they had prostitution going on, and um, because in that city the trade was lost, and so they could not make any money um, through the harbor, they could not make any money through the ports, and said so there was a lot of um, corrupt things and carnal things going on in that city, and the Bible teaches us. Um, that even that temple, that goddess temple, um, served as a treasury. The Bible says that the worshipers came there to worship that goddess and that they will borrow money from the treasury of that temple. That, tre that, that temple served as a bank, um, loaning large sums of money. And even the kings would come and borrow money. There was a lot of corrupt things going on at the church of Eph in the city of Ephesus. Um, there were a lot of corrupt things, a lot of carnal things going on. And so Paul um, started a church in that city and he began to be the church um, that was bringing light to a dark situation. Um, Paul and those that at that church, um, those that had been converted was bringing light into the darkness. They were bringing light into the darkness, those people who were receiving um, Jesus Christ, and they were mad about it. They were upset about it. So Paul writes this letter from prison. He writes this letter to remind them of their walk. He writes this letter, and he tells them in verse 14 um, to arise. He tells them um, to get up. He tells them um, the, that they ought to wake up um, from sleeping, because if you're in Christ Jesus, you ought to be alive. You ought to be alive spiritually. And so he reminds the people to wake up from their sleep and to arise, um, not only wake up, but arise from the dead because they were involved in a lot of carnal stuff. They were involved in a lot of carnal things. And it says you're walking and you're living among those that, not, that are not alive in Christ Jesus. He says, arise, get up, arise from the dead. He said, and Christ will give you light. You know that everywhere Christ was, um, the light shows up. Christ always illuminates dark situations. And so in this passage of scripture, he tells them to wake. 
wake up. And we discussed that last week, how you should awaken. Um, detach yourself from things that are dead. Detach yourself from things um, that are killing you. Not only are, do we become associated with things that are dead, um, but we become dead ourselves. So Paul reminds them about their walk in Jesus Christ. Not only does Paul remind them about their walk, he's talking to them about their walk and that they should wake up. But, but, but then again in verse 15, in verse 10, he talks about um, once you arrive, once you wake up, once you come from among the dead, he talks about how we should walk. He says, see then that ye walk circumspectly. Circumspectly means to be careful how you walk. It carries the idea I told you last week about um, a person that's a gymnast, an acrobatic person that walks on the tightrope, the person that walks on the balancing being. They have to be careful how they walk. They have to be careful how they step. They have to watch their step because if they step wrong, they'll fall. Right. If they step wrong, they will hurt themselves. So he says that you have to be careful of how you walk. While you're in your house, just say, I got to be careful of how I walk. I got to get up from the dead. I got to Leave the dead things. I gotta um, understand that 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 are. I gotta understand that that um that we should um um that we should be careful of how we walk. We should be careful for how we sit and where we sit. Do you understand what I'm saying today? And so and so he says. He says. He says. He says. He says that 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 the believer should walk circumspectly. And sometimes you have to move your seat. Sometimes you have to move where you're sitting. Do I have any witness in your house, in this house? And, and so and so and so we need to understand that verse 15 says you ought to be careful. You ought to be careful. You ought to walk, make sure that you, you're walking strictly. And so he, um, he says in this verse 15, he says, um, that you should be a person that walks, watch how you walk. And see, he says that you should walk circumspectly, which means careful. He said, not as fools, but as wise. Do I have any witnesses? He said, what did he mean? He said that there are two kinds of people. There are people that he were talking to, two kinds of people that he was referring to. He was referring to a person that does not care how they walk. Do I have any witness? Help me out. He was referring to a person that is that walks as fools. What is a fool in the text? A fool is a person that does not care what they do and how they do it. They don't care about who's watching. They don't care about who's around them. They don't care about what they say. They don't care about who they hurt. Um, they, they, they just don't care. Um, um, they, they, just, they don't care. They don't, they don't watch their stuff. Um, they, they, they're very careless. And Paul is talking to um, the church in Ephesus, telling them that if you are a believer, you should be careful about what you do. Because watch this. Those that's on the balancing beam have to balance their self. And so he says in this text that you ought to make sure that you live life with a balance. Not only does he talk about that, but he talks about two kinds of people. Those that's walking through life that are careless, that don't care about what they say and what they do. But then he talks about, he says that the fool is the person that's unthinking, that's thoughtless, that's careless, that's uncaring, that they don't care about what they do and how they do it. They just walk around about life um, just being careless. Um, and he says that that's what's going on. You all are supposed to be in Christ Jesus, but you're living a carnal life and you become reckless and careless. Ooh, I wish I had one witness in here. Have you ever been that person that became reckless? Have you ever 
experience the consequences of reckless living. And let me tell you, this is not the time to be reckless. This is not time to be reckless because you just may find out that your reckless living can damage your future. Do I have any witnesses? So in this text, he says that we have a person that's fools, unwise, uncaring. Then you have a person that is wise. And this is where I left off last week. He says that, then we have a person that's wise because he says, be careful how you walk, not as a person that's careless, that does not care, that's not thoughtful, that's not caring but as a person that is wise. I mean, I mean, a person that's wise is thoughtful. A person that's wise is careful. A person that's wise is spiritually minded. Because when he talks about a fool, he's talking to those that are not spiritually minded. What do you mean? He said, if you're not spiritually minded, then you are carnal. And we don't talk about carnality like we used to. Because we make excuses of why we're carnal. We make excuses of why we are carnal. But Paul says that you have to be, first you gotta get up and move away from the dead. Then you have to be careful how you walk. He said, not as fools, be spiritual. Be spiritual minded. I mean, I mean, a spiritual minded person, Tamara, is a person that's on a mission for God. A spiritually minded person is a person that takes care in righteous living, godly living. A spiritual per minded person is a person that's trying to do what the Lord wants them to do. You don't have time to play when you're spiritually minded. You don't have time for games when you're spiritually minded. Matter of fact, you ain't got time to hang around with people that's not spiritually minded because they will slow you down. They will drag you down. They will become weights on your life. And every time you try to do something from God, the person tells you why you shouldn't do it. Do I have any witnesses in here? And I think right along through COVID-19 is a good time to decide to be wise. It's a good time to decide to be spiritually minded. I mean, after all, we are blood washed. After all, we are the righteousness of God. After all, we accepted Jesus as our personal, our personal Lord and Savior. But the problem is, some of us accept the Lord as Savior, but we don't accept him as Lord. And there's a difference in accepting Jesus as your Savior and, and then your Lord Savior. Lord and Savior means he has ownership of your life. Savior means, just means you believe in Jesus Christ to be the Savior of the world. But to accept him as Lord and Savior means that I have given God all of me. Because sometimes we only want to give God half of us. Lord, you can have my eyes, but you can't have my hands. Lord, you can have my hands, but you can't have my eyes. Lord, you can have my legs, but you can't have my character. Lord, you can have some of me, but you can't have all of me. But Paul says to be careful how you walk. Don't walk as unwise, but walk as the wise. This is what he says in verse 16. And this is where I want to hang my hat for just a few minutes. Paul says to the church of Ephesus, that had a lot of carnality. The city had a lot of carnality. He reminds them about their walk in Jesus Christ. He reminds them that when they had Christ, Christ is the light. Christ will shine through darkness. He reminds them that they should walk circumspectly, which means to be a person that's on a balancing beam, being careful how you walk, being careful how you step, making sure that every step is carefully thought out. Making sure each step, I'm conscious of every step that I make so I won't fall off the balancing beam. 
Uh, so I won't fall off the tight, tight road. He's making sure that we have a good balance. But then he says, I need you to make sure that you come from, come from among the dead and be careful how you walk so you won't waste God's time. Uh, yeah. This is where we are. He says, he says, wasting, wasting, wasting time, waste, wasting time. You ought not waste God's time. What is time? Time is opportunity. You need to understand that time comes from God. Not only does it come from God, but it's a gift of God. Verse 16 says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Listen, if you don't get a handle on verse 15, verse 14, and come from among the dead, then you won't be able to, then you won't be careful of how you walk. If you don't get a handle on verse Ephesians 5, verse 15, then you will have a problem with verse 16. The reason why Paul is talking to them about verse 16 was because they were abusing verse 15. What do you mean abusing? I'm saying that if you're not careful about what you do in this time and how you do it, you won't make good use of verse 16. 16, Paul says, redeeming the time. What is time? Time is opportunity. He says, walk carefully. Be strict about how you walk. Redeeming the time. Listen, he doesn't say buy the time because you cannot buy the time because time is a gift. Right. You can't buy God's time. Like people talk about, I'm going to buy some time. You can't buy time. Because time is a gift from God. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, you have time, but it's not your time. You're living in time, but it's not your time. So when you redeem the time, you are careful how you do things that value the time that God has given you. That's why in verse 15, he talks about walking carefully. Because if you don't walk carefully, you will misuse the time that's in verse 16. What does he say? He says you redeem the time by doing things that are valuable. What you been doing lately? Well, I mean, what you been doing lately? What was you doing before COVID-19 happened? How, how were you spending God's time? How, how were you spending God's time? Were you doing things that were valuable? Are you, do, were they, are you just was doing things out of tradition? Um, were, were, were you wasting God's time, God's valuable time? I mean, I mean, I mean how, 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 how were you redeeming the time? I mean, I mean, were you walking carefully? Those that's watching me, how, how were you redeeming the time? Isn't it something how now, you, now that we've been in shelter in place, you find out how some things you were doing was just a waste of God's time? I haven't you found out that some things that you were involved in was a waste of God's time? Haven't you figured out that some things you didn't, you thought you need, you really don't need? Haven't you figured out that some people that you thought you needed, you really don't need them? I mean, I mean, they're great people, but I just don't need them because they were causing me to be carnal. They were causing me to not be careful how I walked. Do I have any witnesses in here? And so, and so he says, he says that you have to redeem the time. Um, you have to redeem God's time. And to redeem God's time means to do things in time that's valuable. Do I have any way? A person that uses God's time wisely, he does not waste time. He does not waste the gift. You don't, you don't, uh, you, you don't have time to waste. When I get up in the morning, I'm careful what I do with God's time. Time exists. Watch this. Time will exist with or without you. Time will exist with or without you. I want to stop right there. 
And I'm going to continue to talk about this next week, redeeming the time, the, the, the choice is yours of how you value. The way you redeem the time, the way you redeem the time is doing things that are valuable. What Paul was saying that was the carnal lifestyle that you're living is a waste of time. And time is passing you by and you can't get it back. Right. Can't get it. Can't get it back. You're trying to, you, you'll never be 20 again. You'll never be 19. You'll never be 30. You'll never be 40. You'll never be 50. You'll never be 70. You'll never be 30 something. You, you'll never get that time back. It's gone. And when I look back, I want to make sure that the time that I lived in, that I used it wisely. Because he says that a wise person does not waste God's time, but it redeems the time by being involved in things that produce value. I'm going to pray today. I want to pray that you will begin to use the time wisely. Verse 14, come from among the dead, awaken, wake up. Verse 15, walk carefully. Verse 16, redeem the time because the days of evil. And I think we need to talk about next, that next week. How do we redeem the time? And what does the scripture mean by the because the days are evil? I will tell you this, that there's so much stuff that we have to face. There's so many choices that we have. And the way that you redeem the time that God has given you is make sure that you make the right choice. I'm careful of how I, how I walk. Because time is a gift from God. Let's pray. As the praise team gets ready to come back, let's pray. Father, we thank you now. Because so many times, God, we have wasted the time that you have given us. So many times we, we put emphasis on things that are not valuable. And so bless us now to make wise decisions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, I want to offer you Jesus on this first Sunday of the month. It's a good time to say yes to God. Wherever you're watching, share this with somebody that you know need this message. Share this with someone, somebody that you know needs this message. I offer you Jesus. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. Pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of all of my sins. I believe you died for me. I believe you woke up early in the morning, one Sunday morning, and you got up with all power in your hand. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming into my heart and forgiving me of all my sins. I believe because of this prayer, I am now saved. Listen, if you just invited Jesus to your heart and you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he wrote, died on the cross and rose for, for your sins, rose from the dead, you are saved. Welcome to the family of God. Listen, write us, 1607 8th Street, City of Oakland, California. Email us, olive at oakland, gmail .com. Go to our website, www.oliveatoakland.org and give us a message. Let us know, type in the comments, let us know where you're watching this broadcast from. 
we're glad that you tuned in today. Listen, this message is for all of our Olivet members. I'm going to ask that you will continue to do what you've been doing, and that's giving the Lord his tithe. Understanding that everything we have comes from the Lord. You can download the app Givelify from your smart device, or you can go to our website, www.oliventoakland.org, and you can give there. And I want to say thank you to all of the Olivet family for, for giving the Lord, for not holding back the Lord's tithe, being a blessing to the church and being a blessing to your pastor with pastoral support. I just wouldn't rob God right along through here. I need God's covering. I need God's provision. I wouldn't rob God right through here. Everything I have belongs to God. And so I want to thank all of that who have been supportive and you've been mature in the area of stewardship. So keep doing what you've been doing. And those that's watching and you don't have a church home and you want to give to this ministry, you can give by going to our website. May the Lord bless you real good. May you have a blessed week. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord bless you. May his face continue to shine upon you and give you peace. I want you to know that we love you and everything is going to be all right. And I want to let you know that you can hold on to God's unchanging hand. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you need. I don't care we want to go out singing this message to you one more time telling you to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Come on, put your hands together. Here we go.
Yeah.